Welcome to the R video tutorial on nonparametric statistics in R. In this video tutorial, you'll learn how to do basic nonparametric statistics in R. All right, some of the first things we might want to do is a simple hypothesis test against a center against a certain value. Okay, so here's what I have. I have some data set that is timed between nerve impulses, and I have the URL where you can find this data. I'm going to read that in, and what I'm going to use is this Wilcox.test. And I'm going to test it against mu equals 5. We're going to look at the alternative of mu greater than 5, and we're going to see if we can get an exact test out of this. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, okay so we have three sets of outputs here. First one is mu equals 5, the true location is not equal to 5 is the alternative hypothesis. We have a very small p-value. We would say that the true location is not equal to 5. The next one is a one-sided test, and it's interested in if the true location is greater than 5. That's the alternative hypothesis. Here we have a very small p-value, which would in indicate that the true location is actually greater than 5. In the next one, I put an exact equals true statement in because the other ones are based off of some approximation due to the normal distribution. This one is trying to calculate an exact p-value. And notice you get a warning message down at the bottom. It says cannot e compute exact p-value with ties. So what this is going to do is produce a test using the continuity correction on the normal distribution just as before. Okay, so maybe you would like to compare two groups. So for this example, what I've done is I have a data set that looks at the side sway of young people versus elderly people. I'm going to read in this data, and I'm going to run this Wilcox.test on this. And notice all I do is I put in one variable, a comma, and then the other variable that I'm interested in. And all of the other statements that I have above could be used. For example, alternative greater. I could use exact again if I wish. Okay, so this ran our test against elderly versus young, and it says the true location shift is not equal to zero. Notice down at the bottom, it says the Wilcoxon test cannot compute an exact p-value with ties. So this data set does have ties in it. Now, we don't need to worry about that because we didn't specify exact. So we have a p-value of 0 0.1108. This would suggest that the side sways probably aren't different depending on the significance level that you chose. All right, so let's go on to the next one. What if we had paired data, before, after data? That's nice paired data. So what I have here is some data based off of exercise. And what I want to know is, did their pulse change based off of exercise? So notice the Wilcoxon test looks exactly the same. It just says in the data set pulse 1, pulse 2. And then you add a statement, paired equals true, and that will do the paired version of this. Okay, so this produced our output. Notice it says alternative hypothesis, location shift not equal to zero, which was what we were looking for. And we have a very small p-value, which would indicate that the two pulses are not the same for the same person, because this is looking at a difference. The other thing you might want to be interested in is a ANOVA-type test, which has more than two groups. And for that, we can use what's called the Kruskal-Wallis test. And here I have some pain thresholds based off of hair color, and the data can be found at the URL found here. All right, so this produced a Kruskal-Wallis chi-squared test, and it gives us a p-value of 0 0.01417. Now, all of these statements that I have for this non-parametric statistics in R, this, the syntax is extremely similar to what you've seen elsewhere. So if you're not familiar with how to set up the ANOVA, go back and watch the video on ANOVA, and then the Kruskal test will make more sense, just like the Wilcox test will make more sense after you've watched the video on testing for a single mean and inferences on means. So go back and watch those if you're not familiar with the syntax because this is very, very similar. All right, so this has been the R video tutorial on nonparametric statistics. If you have any questions, please ask or watch the next video.